So Jeff, let's jump into it, man. Um, oh boy. Let's do it. five years in time here to the Royal rumble 2019 and believe it or not, you're out number two. So not only are you back in the rumble, but you drew a shit number. Uh, it's pretty cool to come back. And were you, were you nervous, anxious, excited? I mean, at this point you have, it's been a while since you've been wrestling in WWE. I mean, what, since 1997, eight, no, no, no. no. Remember two, 2000, uh, no, 99, October of 99, the China match. That's right. The China yeah. match. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, so 20 years later. Yeah. So, I mean, but to, to, I guess the, yeah, 20 years to jump off into the whole story. I think that's probably the, so, uh, 2018 was when I was inducted to the hall of fame and even, even going into that and coming out of that, I was, as we know, putting my life back together in so many different ways, but I was Mexico um, was a part going down to AAA in Mexico, independent, um, ICW in Scotland. Um, I had a, a couple, anyway, I was, I was all over the, I was all over the place. Um, as it relates to my, my work life, uh, independent shows, Mexico. Um, gosh, I, I just had one when I was doing research, I was trying to think, Oh, I have a, a series, um, of fairs and festivals and baseball shows that at the, toward the end of the year, we were looking at putting in for 2019. Um, again, this is the tailwind of the independent wrestling, independent wrestling. I don't know when you want to say that got hot 16, 17, 15. Oh, anyway, the business outside of now look, AEW at, at, at in 2018 had not launched. Is that correct? Yeah. But there was a lot of, business going on outside of that. And Conrad, when I got that call in December, I was shocked, maybe too strong, but I was definitely surprised. And, you know, the first, uh, part of the conversation was we'd like for you to, uh, be in the Royal rumble 2019 in Phoenix. And I said, okay, um, shoot. Yeah. Let, let me look. And I was booked in Milwaukee uh, at an appearance for a hockey game on that Saturday night. So I'm like, Oh, and they said, Oh yeah, you, you can just come in Sunday morning. We're going to keep you a surprise. I'm like, all right. So, um, I'll shut up Conrad. I don't want to get too far ahead of the story, but yeah, it, I was, I was very surprised when I got the call. what did you think of working with Elias? Oh, so the, 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 look, uh, I won't get into the, t too much of the, the, the nitty gritty here. Cause this podcast will end up being three hours, but you know, fly, you know, they said, Hey, what do you want me to wear? Um, cause I had no idea of my different iterations and the, the, the word came down. We want you to be 95, 96 double J you're in that role. I'm like, okay, I gotta go dial up. And they said, yeah, we're going to get the hat out and get it back working. And I went, Oh boy. Okay. So it is full on, Eric Bischoff's favorite outfit of mine. Uh, so that was, you know, people were like, well, you wore that? And it was like, I'll never forget Gorilla Vince just looking at me like, what in the hell? <laughs> it, we had a good laugh. Uh, uh, Triple H, do the folks in Gorilla, when I came down the steps to go out, they're like, yep, he's definitely all in for this Double J character and the lighted hat. You can tell if you're watching on My World YouTube. I mean, that hat was literally 20. Five years or twenty, well, however old it was, but they got it back working. So, um, but when when they laid out from a creative perspective, um, what my position was, I thought it was perfect. I mean, it, it, I don't think I could have been in a better kind of highlighted position because it, when people see legends, they know that it's all right. We're gonna get entertained by them, and then they're gonna be out. And so the setup with Elias being one and sitting in the ring. And at that time, you know, when he strummed his guitar, the people came up and the reaction was hit was there for him and just everything that went with it. And when they hit my music, uh, I was very grateful, uh, for, for the response and the reaction. And again, the story, um, had I not had, you know, the yin and the yang of Elias, um, 
you know, who knows kind of what my reaction would have been. It might have been, oh, what this, what this. But knowing the guys in the ring with the guitar and here comes Double J, it just fit. And from the day I met Elias, we've, we hit it off. Uh, extremely good uh, working relationship, which turned into a personal relationship. But a uh, lot of fun, a lot of fun in, in that two or three minute, the guitar shot in the back. I've never liked those. I never liked taking them or giving them, but it stung like hell, but it's uh part of it. And uh, the people for the five minutes of uh, double J and Elias, uh, they got their money's worth. What do you think's next for Elias? The real life guy behind the character. Is he going to continue to pursue wrestling? My understanding. Yes, I have, I, you know, we've had offline discussions off and on through the years and the, 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 for me, and I've shared this with him, so I'm not sharing anything. I, I think we've either got to be a heel or a baby face, whatever it may be. I think he was one guy that got kind of caught out in. Neither no, fish nor foul. Yeah. Yes. No man's land because he would get a response. Um, I mean, a, a really good response live but it never to me pushed on to the next level. And I know that's a creative decision. Um, but, but I always said from the beginning and I think, uh, did wasn't dusty instrumental in his early days in NXT, like the yes. drift. Yeah. I, I, I just, you know, someone like a dusty or dusty, someone that had a vision for that character. Um, I, I think he could have gone to a whole, he's talented and he can work. Uh, and he's got a, 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 a unique air about him. His charisma is unique. Uh, and I think that works for, for that, but I never could, uh, get an understanding uh, again. I don't, I don't, I think it was just kind of a lack of focus that creative never really defined him as a heel or a baby face or stayed with it long enough, but that's neither here nor there. I think he could be very successful in this business. Very well said. So we see you at the Royal rumble and we see you on raw the next night. And that's when you've got road dog with you and Elias is here. You guys are going to be singing with my baby tonight. And then everybody gets laid out with the, uh, <laughs> the guitar, uh, Meltzer had this to say Jarrett with road dog versus Elias. Jarrett didn't wear the jacket or the hat this evening, but still came out to the nineties music and his goofy nineties catchphrase. They sing with my baby tonight. I love the idea that this is now some lost classic in WWE history. Elias interrupts the concert, buries the guy in the ring, buries the fan. Elias gets the heat, then knocks Road Dog off the apron, turns around into a Jarrett comeback. Jarrett was sucking wind, but made it through his comeback. <laughs> I guess Pondwater was right in that part. Yeah. Then Road Dog tried to interfere. Elias punched him off the apron, and they turned around and gave Jarrett his finish for the pin. Made both guys look like geeks. A WWE lead writer involved in a finish like that is disconcerting. Seven minutes and 49 seconds. Road Dog then jumped Elias from behind, made his own comeback, and then him and Jarrett laid him out two on one. So to recap, the heel won clean in the middle after thwarting the cheating, uh, thwarting cheating by the baby faces. Then the baby faces double teamed the guy and beat him up afterwards. I read this sometimes and I think. To myself self old Dave Meltzer might be taking this a little too seriously. This is supposed to be nostalgia and fun. What's a year? <laughs> God, man. It's, um, Oh, uncle Dave just picked up where he was either in the TNA days or the USWA days or wherever it may be. Let's just carve up Jeff the best we can because that, that and that is one thing from an entertainment perspective. Um, like, Oh, Conrad, where'd I go? <laughs> but well, you know what? I wanted to ask for your photo again, because if you're watching from 2019 and we got some shots of you here from 2019, people who saw you wrestle every other week last week, how do you somehow look better in 2023 than you did in 2019, Jeff? So I'm going to, okay. I'll answer this. And then I want to go back to that. How do I look better in 2019? So Conrad, right. 2023, how do you look better now than then? Uh, diet and, and Corey, my trainer, we work out a completely different level. Uh, I'm going to say this. I'm not a fan of intermittent fasting during this time. I was intermittent fasting, believe it or not. Um, okay. I was intermittent fasting and it, and it didn't work. And, um, so 
this is, uh, what did we just say? 2019. So I've been sober two years. Uh, but again, my, how I work out today and have since coming out of the pandemic, what was that two before Rick Flair last match? So six months, seven months, no, a year before Flair's last match, whatever it may be. I just changed out, completely changed how I worked out and ate, uh, intermittent fasting. I got that thing down to, I only ate between two and six at night. Um, I just think that's not not a healthy way to go. Uh, and maybe this picture is proof of it. <laughs> but my workout also changed um, big time. Um, but back, back to – go ahead. You add, follow and then, up. And then randomly that song, I mean, all of a sudden it's a lost classic. Like, what? Dave's right. Where the hell would that happen? I don't get it. What's crazy is – and I've, I did watch this back on um, – so WWE social media, me and Brian were both kind of like, damn people in, um, wherever we did roll out, I think Portland and it was one yeah. of the weeks they remembered every word to it as good or better than me and Brian knew the words to the song. So when we did it at the hall of fame in 2018 and that was instructed, I mean, me and Brian looked at each other and okay, Jeff, when you get done, you know, Brian introduced me or inducted me and I gave my acceptance speech. And then, um, the, the, the powers that be, cause it was creative. And yeah, we're going to, I want you to call Brian out and Brian busted me. And we did that song and Cardona was in the, the crowd, uh, and he wanted us to come over, you know, so we walked through the crowd that hall of fame night, people, for whatever reason, that song resonated. It's a catchy little silly tune, but. You know, again, that's a Dave pot shop, but no nostalgia. And, um, recently, uh, a marketing buddy of mine here in the Nashville, uh, area, we were having conversations and he just said, Hey, you know, cause we were talking about nostalgia and we were, we got into the NBA conversation. And I'll tell you what, I wanted to go back to this Conrad, a little sidebar, because I want to ask you, and you be thinking about your answer. Why in the world is Caitlin Clark women's college basketball? Why is what has resonated because her game Friday last Friday night ratings wise, and I hadn't heard the recent rating for the championship game, but last Friday, a Friday night beat world series, NBA finals, all college football, except one game, all kind of bowl games. The only thing it hasn't beaten really is the NFL thing. And that's an anomaly, but uh, that's a ratings. He, she, you know, Caitlin Clark is a ratings juggernaut. I want to get your, reason why but in this whole conversation that i was having with the marketing guy is we kind of we talked about all kinds of things and what sells tickets and marketing and ratings and all that but he was just like jeff he said you know there's a reason that a a young artist who has let's just say he can do a 90 minute set but about an hour of that 90 is his stuff but why does he do 30 minutes of covers and he goes, because people are emotionally attached to the song, not the singer. They're attached to the song. So covers is all about nostalgia and people have their different twist on it. And this, their new artist does different covers. When you integrate nostalgia in professional wrestling, it's a feel good moment. And man, Dave does not feel nostalgia. I don't think on, on any level, certainly didn't feel road dog and, and double J nostalgia, uh, as he reported on this. And that's kind of, to me, a little bit of a head scratcher, honestly, that he just carves it up just to carve it up. 